Good morning. ¿Cómo está? Bien, usted. Oye, ¿qué es lo que está pasando aquí, chico, entre tú y yo? No, no, en serio. ¿A dónde? ¿A dónde? Sin joder, sin joder. ¿A dónde? Why are you got, do you know who I am? David V. You seem like a cool officer, bro. I, I, I heard about you. You heard about me? Come on down. Introduce yourself to my viewers, for real. Gil Contreras, Rochester Police Department. Listen, Traffic first things here. first. We're never going to agree on everything. That's but true. I want to, no, but That's in all true. seriousness, as a man to man, and even more so, one Latino to another. Cuban, but raised here with Puerto Ricans, with Boricua. You Boricua? Say. Thank you for at least greeting me professionally, and I mean that. All right. A lot of my interactions with the police, especially the RPD, have led a lot to be have left a lot to be desired in the in the demeanor of them. What is going on, and why so close to the Brighton line? You you know that some of us have very different opinions than you guys. Whether it's ticket quarters, which I know, I know you guys adamantly deny. I get that that they don't exist. We'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. But honestly, why so close to the line of a neighboring town? Are you guys set up? And this is at least the third time in the past couple of weeks that I've that I've documented. I don't know if I missed one, you know. I do have a life other than this. So okay. maybe I maybe I missed one, but honestly, all jokes aside, what's up with that? There, there's no reasoning for it. I mean, this is still the city of Rochester. This okay. is a 30 mile per hour zone. Okay. And we're enforcing a 30 mile per hour zone speed limit. What is it that you guys are finding that's necessi that's that's necessitating the need for for the the heavy what I what I'm going to choose to call heavy presence as far as the traffic uh traffic monitoring here in the last couple of weeks again so close to another town what is it what is it about this location specifically uh, this location hasn't been hit for speeds in a long time okay so we there's only a few of us in the traffic unit okay and we get spread out thin okay so we have to try to do the whole city of Rochester you guys are in my old neighborhood a lot L Lyle Avenue West Side yeah, yeah, I've I, seen I you over there. Hit Lower Avenue I've seen you on the lot. bridge a lot, the Upper Falls yes. Bridge. Yeah, yes, and that's yeah. that's that's people come flying over that bridge, 55, 60 miles an hour, right. and that's a 30. This is what some people misconceive. Oh, this guy just hates the cops. He has nothing better to do. He's an angry Cuban guy. What's wrong with him? But honestly, there's a thin line between enforcing the law, which I know people break it every day. But there's a thin line between that and what many folks, including myself, look at generating revenue. I mean, especially when it's the end of the month and you, I see you guys everywhere. I mean, Rochester is one seven. of the... No, 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 no. I, right. Today is, a, today is the ninth. But, right. What I mean is last hey. month... No, today is the ninth. Last yeah. month, um, last month specifically, I, I captured you guys and it was, it was literally like, like the day before Halloween. It was very... It was the end. And, and I know you can't talk much, right? But, but what, what is it really between me and you... What do you say about that thin line when some folks, including myself, who are big critics of... of, of many police actions say you know what there's enforcing the law then there's just basically excuse my language no offense to you but sitting on your butt for lack of a better way of putting it and literally just generating income what what do you say to that i say you're wrong we're here for a reason we have to enforce the laws because if we don't enforce the laws people take advantage of it people get hurt people die so that's why we have to enforce the law if we slow five cars down then we'll slow five cars down uh, but there's no I denying said, that there's no denying that you're raking. Obviously, the city's raking in some, some, some fines. Obviously. Well, not every car I stop, I give a ticket to. Them. Right. I, I do give warnings. Use discretion. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, okay. discretion. You know, we don't have a quota in the Rochester Police Department as far as tickets. Obviously, quotas do exist. You're saying not in the RPD, but not, obviously not, right. not in the RPD. Right. All right. So we could go out there to write, write as many as we want. I noticed. You know? a, I noticed a New York exit. Yes, South Bronx, oh. New York. Nice. Nice. Westchester, Fordham? No, Fordham. Fordham, okay. Yeah. I'm a little familiar with South Bronx. Yeah. Because the reason that, that caught my eye is because not only the, the accent, I think it's super cool. You know, we don't have it up here in the sticks, you know, how, how people refer to us uh, up north, upstate. But um, the reason I say is because obviously there's no denying that quotas do exist. Whether or not in the RPD, that I respect, what, I respect you know, I, I would personally disagree with that, but I respect your, your opinion. But there's a fellow Boricua, a fellow Puerto Rican officer who actually videotaped, audio taped, um, his superiors somewhere up, uh, I don't know if it's Bronx, somewhere in, in, the, in one of the precincts in New York, basically saying, I don't give a F the superior. What, you know, stop him for whatever, whether it's stop and frisk, which has been ruled, you know, unconstitutional since then. But specifically to citations, obviously everyone knows the NYPD definitely had quotas, but you're, you're saying that. We don't have You're saying the RPD doesn't subscribe to that? No, no. Okay. We, I work out of the traffic enforcement unit, and my primary focus is traffic enforcement. 
I've been in traffic in Foster Unit for 21 years. No, I, I know. I've seen you. I don't think I've ever had the pleasure to meet you, but uh, I've seen so, you. Like I said, I, I recognize you. I recognize sometimes you guys got the, the, the pinstripe. Yeah. And I recognize you from um, Upper Falls a lot. A lot of, maybe a lot of viewers now. I got obviously local viewers too that uh, that maybe you've stopped them. And, and, uh, and not to cut you off, but we got a lot of stuff at uh, traffic stops. You know, a lot of guns, a lot of drugs. Right. That people don't know about. But obviously, I mean, you open in a door that's a little bit very sensitive issue because many people, including myself, know that sometimes you guys initiate a traffic stop as a foot in the door, so to speak. Mm. Well, what I'm saying is you have no way of knowing unless someone's smoking a bong as they drive by. You're saying, it. but well, some cases, I'm sure, I'm sure they've done that. You guys have seen just about everything. I, I don't doubt that. But what I'm saying is, obviously, you would agree with me that in most situations, that's a secondary thing to a stop. In other words, you might find, you, you don't. You, your first stop is stopping them because you claim they're speeding or we have, we have to have, some traffic violation. We have to have probable cause. Absolutely, the absolutely. You right. know, it could be a simple a headlamp out, right. not using your turn signal. You know, tinted windows, that's a violation. Now we get up to the car, we speak to the motorist, he doesn't have, have any identification, right. or he doesn't have a license, so right. we suspend it. Or we see, but again, the or initial stop drugs. is basically is basically a Vehicle door traffic. that you guys sometimes, I'm not, I'm not saying nefariously, some of you, but not all of you. What I'm saying is anything that comes from that point on is obviously very much secondary. I mean, if you don't observe someone using drugs in a car, you're stopping them for a traffic violation. Right. What you're saying is, as a result of that, Correct. something else can come, and that's and that's a questionable practice too. But you know, it, you know, listen. I've never said I don't know how familiar you are with my work or not, but I've never said you guys don't have a tough job. You do. My pet peeve and what drives me crazy is not only how some of you guys, not you personally, trust me, I know the names, how some of you guys like Randall Ramble Benjamin, who's still in the force. Uh, tormented my dad to the point that he committed suicide so that's what drives me it's a very personal thing for me and I admit it I never hide it I'm not against police but I'm against the realization that I woke up one day and I said wow the people that I was taught to respect the badge the uniform you look for them if you're in trouble you remember I don't know if you had him the Bronx officer friendly come to your school but I did and and I'm sorry but just like with a lot of stuff, just like people get into relationships and they realize, hey, it's not what it's cracked up to be. And that's why there's divorces. So I'm not saying it's just police, but sometimes we come to the realization in life that something that we believed in and something we held in high regards and we were taught from an early age to respect, not all of you, some of you have made it very hard for people to keep that. It's almost like a security blanket. When you figure out that the person that you looked up to, you know, is now engaged in horrible crimes and, and above the law and using their power and authority.